Hey everybody, um, hope you're doing great. Just uh, decided that it was time for a, uh, a live stream here. Um, it had been a while since I did one and I have wanted to do this one for, I don't know, about a week and a half. Um, and I thought, hey, you know, I just gotta do it. I know that sometimes people ask me, um, how do they get notified that there is a live stream and normally it's like I schedule them and then you should get notified if you subscribe for the channel. But today I just decided to uh, sit down and get it done because like I said, I wanted to do it for a while. I think I have something today that is kind of fun and uh, I think that most people can get something out of. So, um, you know, as people kind of like here are trickling in, um, we kind of like have people who just started out with the software and then we got people who are a little bit better and then of course we got uh you know the fusion ninjas um i'm not sure how much they're gonna get out of this today other than maybe uh you know they can give their kind of comments down in the comment area about um you know how they would attack things in here so i can see we already got a couple of people in here um cool thank you so much thank you uh, for joining in um, so we're definitely going to be inside of Fusion and I think I'm going to show you, uh, some fun stuff. Um, some people sometimes comment that when I do things on the screen, it looks so easy. Well, what I'm going to show you today, maybe not so much the case, kind of like where you maybe end up, uh, scratching your head a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I have done in the previous live streams. I have something I want to show you. It's going to take me about probably like 20, 25 uh, minutes. And then in the end, I will pay attention towards the uh, comment area um, and check up on all you guys uh, jumping in here. So I can already see we got you know a few people in there. So, hey guys, appreciate you guys jumping in. But let's jump over and talk about Fusion because, you know, that's really more the fun part. So let's switch over here. And you got Fusion on the screen. We got, we're starting out with a blank uh, screen today. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about lettering. Um, I got a question. How do you do letters in Fusion? And some of you guys are probably thinking, yeah, that's pretty easy. And, you know, um, so we're going to start there. But then actually it come a little bit more complicated as we're getting into, into it. I'll show you. But I think it's some cool features because what I want to talk, touch about today is actually uh, some of these revolve sweep loft commands. And then in the end, I'm actually going to jump in and also talk a little bit about sculpting. So uh, hello, Canada. Hello, Denmark, India. We got Scotland here. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to do this. So let me jump in here and start uh, working a little bit inside of Fusion for the next uh at least 15 minutes or so uh, and just kind of like talk to you as we're going through it. So let's just let's just start sketching. So I'm going to turn my origin on and I'm really like that. Uh, and I'm going to right click and create a sketch. And I'm just going to create something here. Um, I like to use my S key, right? That kind of like comes up with with uh, default things in here. So I'm going to do a center rectangle and I'm going to this is really doesn't matter. I'm going to make it four inches by six inches. For example, hit Q for extrude. That normally gets us in this extrude command here. I'm going to go up half an inch. And then I'm going to start another sketch on this top face, create another sketch. And uh, I could just do another rectangle, but I'm actually going to hit O for offset and hit that edge there. Kind of like gives me uh, an offset from that edge that is parametric. I'm going to go, I'm going to go minus half an inch and then I'm going to do Q again and just kind of like give us a bottom feature here. Really all I did here, let me turn my audio on, all I did here was just kind of like create a little box, uh, nothing too, too fancy. Um, so talking about um, text, so I got the question, how do you create text inside of Fusion? There's different ways you can do it, uh, but the easiest one is probably just create a sketch. So I'm going to right click, create a new sketch. And yes, right now I make everything look easy. Go over to your sketch drop down and in here you have a uh, sketch dialog box. So I'm going to click that and then I can select 
this sketch area. So I'm just going to click somewhere on the screen here. And then you get the, um, the little text area over here. So I'm going to do capital and I'm just going to type fusion for right now. <laughs> Make it half an inch height and see how it's upside down. We can rotate that. Um, and then you can actually grab in here and you can kind of like place it. You could have created a line down here um, and, and kind of like aligned it up with. Um, what I'm going to point out over here is I'm going to keep it at the Arial font. But all these fonts over here are Windows font, right? That you can do inside of Fusion. Um, so with that, I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Q again to uh, extrude this. Now, I'm going to go inside of the part here by like 50 thousands. Like this. So now we kind of have it... Uh, kind of like cut into our stock. I hope that shows up pretty well. Um, now, if you're doing this, uh, then if you, if you want to machine this, I would definitely recommend if you go to the cam area that you check out the engraving tool path in here. Uh, it does a really nice job with this kind of letterings um, because it actually will kind of like machine out the corners of the letters. So some of you guys are using Fusion and then using another cam system. Uh, with many other cam systems, you want a stick font because you can't handle this. But the, the cam thing will actually be able to do that very well. So just so you are aware of that. But what if I go back into our modeling and um, instead of going inside of here, I'm going to right click and hit edit. Um, I am going to go plus. So we're going to go up like this and do uh, lettering like that. Now we kind of like have a uh, stand up letters. And of course, if we wanted to make this, uh, then we would kind of like do more like a pocketing operation where we would be cutting uh, around uh, the letters. All right. This was kind of like just an intro to, uh, to letters because this is when kind of like things to me, um, got interesting. So um, cool enough, we can uh, absolutely make uh, letters inside of Fusion fairly easy like this. Well, then I got the question, what if I wanted a rounded top on my letters? Um, and I thought, all right, yeah, we can, uh, we can definitely work with that. So let's go in and uh, talk a little bit about, about that. So I'm going to go back into Fusion here. Um, now I'm going to go up and open a new file. So I'm going to click up a new file, new design. And I'm pretty much going to do what I did before, except I'm just going to open up a new sketch on this face here. And for the letter itself, I'm just going to do uh, an F, the Fusion F. Well, just the standard F uh, like this. And I'm keeping the Arial font and then I'm just going to extrude uh, that up here. Now some of you guys are uh, coming in here joining right now. Um, let me just recap what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do here. So um, question was can we do uh, rounds on top of letters um, inside of Fusion 360 and that kind of like brings me to this point where I want to talk a little bit about some of these revolve, sweep commands, loft command in here. So that's what I'm kind of like, I'm just using lettering as an example, but it's not really, you know, I, hopefully you can get more out of this if you don't have anything to do with letters. I think it's more like a principle um, of things. So um, when I'm looking at this here uh, and I'm thinking I want to put around the top of this, my first thought would maybe be to, well, can I just uh, throw some kind of a fillet in there, right? That, I think that's legit. So let's click the fillet tool and click this edge here. And if I just drag it, we can kind of like see we can we can add a fillet in here. Now I'm going to just make this one like 20 thousandths, I think. Hit OK. So that kind of like gives me a fill around there. Now I can right click and say repeat fillet, if you didn't know that. So like this one, and let's do this one at 20 thousands. All right, that doesn't look too bad. I can see though that I'm ending up with a little bit of a uh, 
flat spot on there. So let's try to make this maybe 25. Yeah, that looks good. But see what happens if I go down to the other fillet and make that one 25. What's going to happen then, guys? Ooh. <laughs> right? Um, and uh, then it kind of like overcuts itself because I made the radius bigger than than the width of the of the part here um so let's make it maybe 23 see if that goes no nope. make it oops wrong one let's make it 22 now i'm just guessing all right 22 see now it looks all right i guess uh but we still have a little bit of a a thing uh down here a little flat down here it got us somewhere you know with a rounded rounded letter um, <clears throat> so my point about that is you know it sounds like an easy task let's just put a round on letters but because we're inside of Fusion 360 where everything has to be solved down to the last kind of like decimal place um, when those two radius kind of like went over each other the software it can't calculate you know, there's a bunch of ones and zeros, right? And suddenly when they overlap, it kind of like makes the software not be able to calculate what happens and it kind of like swooped down and became, uh, you know, not really what we wanted. Uh, but that's okay. We will move on from this and, and test other things out. Uh, so with that, let's get rid of these uh, two fillets here back to where we were before. So what I'm thinking I'm going to try to do next is I am going to use the standard press pull kind of command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a sketch on the back face here. So right click, create a new sketch. And uh, I am going, I like to use uh, the free point arc for things like this. So I'm going to select this corner, I'm going to select this corner, and then I kind of like get the arc. And I'm just going to place it somewhere here. And uh, then I can hit D on my keyboard for dimension. So I can place a dimension. And here's another little trick. If you see I hover over it, you see how this center point kind of like get highlighted? If I hold down Shift and hover over, then suddenly I can snap that tangent midpoint up there. Huh. So that was holding down Shift. I'm going to do that a few times, so um, you know you, you will get a hold of that if that's new to you. So I'm going to place that little line there, and I'm just going to make this like 50 thousands like that, and it got that half moon ship there. Let's do the Q again for press pull, and I'm going to select here, and if I drag the arrow, you will see we get a nice round, and if I now just click on this back face down here, you will see that we end up with kind of like a nice round here. So um, this is pretty good, um, right? What I really like about actually the press pull um, is that if I go ahead and I create one on this face, so let me do the same thing as I just did. So right click, create a new sketch. I'm gonna go up and select a free point arc and I'm gonna snap it to this point, this point. And again, I get kind of like the third point is the rotation. Place it there, hit D on the keyboard, like Dennis, for dimension. Hold down Shift, you can select that upper point. If you don't hold down Shift, you get the center point. Looks like that, with that, and make that 50 thousands. Now, this is why I like uh, the press uh, pull, because if I hit Q now, and I start extruding that out, there's an option over here in the distance that's called up to object. So if I click on that and I select that other round we did, look what happens. It actually does a really nice blending job uh, between the two. So that's kind of nice. So I actually kind of like this, like this portion of this round here and this portion of this round here, you know, that's, that's acceptable. I think that's good. Now, um, the only last thing when I'm looking at this F, and, and we all maybe, you know, looking at things differently, but I kind of the end, I don't like the end. I think that should be kind of round two. Now, if I go to the back end and I right click here and create a sketch, I could actually create another 
free point sketch here, free point arc. And look at this, I'm just gonna click somewhere here, somewhere here. Oh, no, I'm gonna do it over again. I'm gonna click somewhere here, somewhere here, and somewhere here. And if you ever watched any of my videos, I always talk about relationships over here. Um, and the tangency relationship, anytime you're doing anything with a curve, tangency should always be the one you first put on. And if we use that, we can actually fully define this one here by literally a tangency to the three edges. Okay, I don't know, maybe that was a little tip. Uh, so now that's fully defined. I'm gonna Q and then I'm gonna select these two areas and I'm gonna cut those off. Now I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna say distance, I'm actually gonna say through all, that's good practice. Uh, like that, so now we kinda get that round and that's cool. But I really don't like how that merges together, right? We're still kind of like, if we're trying to put, you know, fill it on lettering, that should kind of like be round two. So for that, we can actually use uh, a revolve. And if you remember um, from some of the previous live streams, I actually talked a little bit about uh, the revolve, how you could make a lens, like a, a pair of glass lenses, anything round, in this case, I actually want to use it to kind of like to cut with. So kind of like shave off this weird edge. Now to do that, I want to start a sketch right here. That's where I want the sketch to start. Kind of like make a half moon shape. But remember, there's, only, there's two ways you can sketch. Either on a face or a plane. Well, I don't really have a face to sketch on here so we got to use a plane but the original planes are kind of like not in the right spot that's where these planes up here in this row here comes into play right so uh use these up here get familiar with these uh, when you are when you when you're working spend 10 minutes just kind of like get familiar with them i'm going to show you two of them today i'm going to show you the offset plane but it's the same one as this one up here and I'm also gonna use a little bit later this plane through two edges. So I'm gonna use an offset plane, what means, as it says, it will create a plane that is offset from either another plane, or I'm just gonna select this face. And then I can like grab the arrow. You can see how I get the plane here. Well, I want it to snap into that intersection. So I'm just gonna click there and you see how it's snapped in there, okay? I'm gonna do this one more time later on. So if it's a little bit new to you, but what I have now when I hit OK is I got a plane that cuts right through that point. So now I can actually sketch on that. So I'm going to sketch on that plane. But really what I want on this plane is actually that sketch I created in the beginning to make that extrusion. I just went up to the tree here and highlighted it. See how that sketch is sitting right there? That was the original one I sketched on. I actually want to get that one over on this plane. Well, you can do something called project. So if I open up a sketch on this plane here, it's gonna go normal too, I'm just gonna move it a little bit again. If you hit P on your keyboard for project, then I can actually select this line here, and now you will see in purple that line had now been projected. I don't know who came up with the colors purple, really. Um, but it projected it over to this intersection of it. doesn't matter what color it is, of course. So now I kind of like have that sketch over there. So that is cool. I'm going to say OK to that. I'm actually going to hide that first sketch we created again. And I'm going to continue sketching in here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go normal to go front. And I'm gonna go into the line command sitting up here. I'm gonna create a line over. I'm just gonna make sure it kinda of like it snaps into the midpoint. I'm gonna move up and you'll actually see I'm gonna move past my area because what I wanna cut with is the outside. I hope this makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna go in and click another free point arc. I'm using that free point arc all day today. And create a free point arc from here, kinda of like down to here. And I'm gonna close it off with another line from here to here, okay? 
So what I kind of have right now is, and I should fully define this. I'm not going to do it right now just to make some people mad. <laughs> uh, but the reason you should fully define it is that if you don't fully define it, then three weeks later you come in here and by mistake you do something. You know how you can completely change this if you don't lock it down. So that's the reason you shouldn't. You should fully define it, but I'm not going to do this for right now. But what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this portion you can see out here to actually cut away this area over here with that um, with that revolve. So we'll click revolve, and the first thing it's asking for is the profile. So I click that profile here. Okay. And then it's going to select what axis I want to rotate around. And I'm going to select that line I have in the center here. Now, by default, they want to cut all the way around 360 degrees. Let me just hit OK. So that's not what we want. But you get the general idea. Let's go back in and edit it. And uh, we can either change it by dragging. 180 should be the right number. Hit OK. And we kind of like shaved whatever it was and shaved that corner off right there um so we got a good good corner now i will say if for some of you guys this was you guys followed along pretty well uh for some of you guys uh this maybe is brand spanking new information um don't you know if you didn't quite get it first of all this is being recorded of course uh and if you don't quite get it don't worry about it you know it's always like when you're learning new software it's always a little frustrating at the beginning kind of like confusing um, you will definitely get a hang of it. But pretty much what we did with that last revolve was we kind of like scraped around the center line I created, kind of like scraped around, almost like if we took a scraping tool and scraped uh, around the end. So um, this is how far I'm going to take uh, this, <laughs> this F here. Um, some of you guys will say that was a lot of work to get to this point, and I don't really think you are wrong in saying that um, but that's kind of like how it is in in parametric world now I want to move on because I actually want to show you how like I said before many people tell me that when they see that I do things um, you know I always make it look so easy but I actually want to show you kind of like how sometimes I can run into kind of struggles uh, too, or interesting scenarios too so um, let's move on from the F here um, so let's go in and open a new design. I'm just going to take a sip of water here. So we just did the F and that was pretty straightforward. Um, kind of what I would call like, I don't want to call it basic modeling, but we used like the push pull, right? And we used the, the revolve. Now, if I go in and I create, uh, the U, this gets kind of funny or interesting. So we're going to create the U, just the next letter of fusion. I'm going to make it the same height. I'm keeping it at Arial. And let's extrude that up. Something, some height. Okay, so this is where things to me kind of get, get interesting. Um, and if you are a fusion ninja or a cat ninja, you may be already looking at this right now, but, and you see things are not great because what we have is this U is really made up of kind of like crummy uh, geometry. Like we have like these different plates here. It's not a smooth transition between this. And actually it's kind of bad. Like if I go from and look at the top of this U, if I zoom in, you can see how there's like a dip right here. Kind of funny. Um, and, and, and these, you have some inside plates with the outside plates and they are not even kind of like lining up. They're like off. Um, we're gonna see that in, in, in a little bit. Um, and, and the reason this is interesting to me, uh, you know, like I said, somebody asked the question, can we just put, you know, some, some rounds on lettering well if it's kind of not great what you're working with garbage in garbage out good things in garbage good things out then um you know it can get hard on you 
um, <laughs> pretty pretty easily. So when I go in here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the fillet test on it um, because, again, that might be exactly what you need. Uh, so let me just go around here and uh, select the edges, outside edges. And we've figured out before that, like, in the 21, 22,000s, maybe. So I'm going to do that one. That looks fairly good. Let's do another fillet on the inside. Okay. I really hope this is helpful for you guys. If not, then go and do something else for your time. But so here is something interesting. So I made two fillers identical size. Notice what happens with this U when I do that. See, we still have a little bit of a flat spot, so it's not a really full round. But then look what happens towards the center here. See how it merges together? First of all, look at this. These two don't even line up. But you see how things kind of like merges together? So this, this U as it's extruded out are not even like not even the same width all the way around here um, and that's really again it's just because we're using the windows font that's what fusion are using um, and we just kind of like extruding that out and that's not that accurate and, and as i said before fusion are you know a mechanical accurate software so this is kind of like throwing us off a little bit um so before i go to the, the answer the best answer i can come up with if you really want a great lettering would be to like uh use like a svg file from like illustrator or something like that just so if you're sitting waiting for the punchline that's probably the best way to do it so illustrator and, and bring in an SVG file. But let's just keep working with this because what we can now do is when we're looking at this, one command that might be, be good would be the sweep command. Now the sweep command, if you never used it, actually look at this picture here, it's kind of like thinking of piping. It, does, it has kind of like two sketches or two entities it's using. It's using a profile and then it's using a path that it's following. So to show you this, let me go in and sketch what we did before. So I'm going to open up a new sketch here and I'm going to sketch another three point arc from here to here. And again, I'm going to hit D for dimension, hold down shift so I can catch this corner here and bring this one over here. And I'm going to make it in thousands like this. And uh, then um, we can go ahead and use this sweep so what i want to do is i'm going to select my profile it's going to be our arc and then the path see how we can select around the edge and this actually looks pretty dang good i think All right that's not too shabby for um for around here but you will see that something looks goofy down here that's like a step down there and actually if i flip it around and look at the back side you will see there's a huge lip sticking out here um now that's because what we did was we took that profile and we told it to continue that profile along that path so it wasn't taking into consideration uh, that the letter was thinner down here uh it was using that same size profile down here now, maybe this is good enough for what you need, but um, that's why that looks like that. So be aware of, I hope that the sweep command, if you've never seen it before, this was helpful to see you how the sweep command works, right? So kind of like just a profile and then we could follow it along. Now, the next one though is the loft um, could also be interesting. So let me delete our sweep and I'm going to, so in that last sketch on here. So the loft works with sketches between, or works between sketches. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna take this profile we have here, and I want another one down at this end. So I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm gonna use that construction plane, select a place that is perpendicular to, and then I can just select right down there, put a plane down there, 
I can now open a sketch on that plane. And just like before, I can use that project command. It's actually also, I think, down in the sketches, all the way down here, P for project. And now I can project. Remember, I started my sketch down on this plane. I can project this one down there. I'm going to take the bottom of it there, too. See how it turns purple. Hit OK. And I'm going to stop that sketch. So now I kind of like have two sketches. I have this profile and this profile. Now I can loft between them. So I'm going to go in here. And this time I'm going to use the loft command. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to select this one. And hit OK. And I really, right now, I really get the same thing as I would have gotten with the Q. So there's not really, with the press pull, not really any advantages with this one here. But where the loft command, I'm going to continue using it, uh, where they maybe come in is um, now where we're going to start following this U around. So here I'm going to go in and use another plane. I'm going to use the plane called plane through two edges. I'm going to delete it again and, and do it one more time as you see it. So plane through two edges. And if I select this edge and I select this edge, see how now I get a plane through them? So I, I just, if you're brand new to Fusion, I think you will be, it will help you tremendously if you spend a little time playing around in here, get familiar with these planes. Again, like I said before, we can only sketch on either a face or a plane. Uh, so if you don't have a face, you need a plane. And this is where you can create those. So down on this plane now, and you can see here, if I go to the top, how bad this plane really is. See how it's kind of like in an angle? Because this geometry from this U is really not great. We're going to work with it. So I'm going to go ahead here and open another sketch. Create a sketch on that. And uh, I actually, I can't get, I, I don't know if this may be intended. This might be something I should bring up to development. But if I go in and select a free point arc, I cannot pick any intersection up between there. I think this maybe has to do with 3D sketches because I have 3D sketches turned on. I'm not 100% sure. But if I create the line first, it will actually let me snap into it. And then the free point arc will let me do the rest here. Up like that. D for dimension. Hold down your shift key to intersection. And that's going to be 15. There we go. All right, so now we have a sketch that sits here and a sketch, this, and, and then we got this profile over here. Let's do another loft. So go over, create a loft from here to here and to here, and we get the loft. Um, but see what it's doing? It's kind of like going, it's lazy. It's going the shortest, the shortest realm here. Um, so what we can do is we can use something called rails, um, but rails really don't like these edges. So I'm going to go out of this. What they like is something called splines. Now, so I said when I started this live stream that we kind of like it's going to be from beginners and up to, I don't know, advanced. So now we're starting getting into things where it may be getting a little bit more advanced. You fusion ninjas out there, I know you're fully along with this. You might even be ahead. That's fine. Um, if you're fairly new to fusion and this kind of stuff starts getting you a little uneasy, just just take this as see what can what can come out of this and nothing else. Uh, you know, raise your horizon a little bit. Uh, know what you can do. And then you can always email me or put in the common area and people will, will help you. So don't worry too much about it. But what we're going to do is with this uh, loft is we can use a spline to kind of like drag it towards this edge. So a spline is like a line. It's a sketch geometry, but it's pretty flexible. So if I go over to the sketch down, you will see that splines are sitting right here. Um, now, if you... A couple of tips. So many times when people are doing splines, they think that they want to select a corner here and then they want to kind of like click 50 times as they're going along the ads. But fewer po points with splines, the better. So I'm actually only going to select that point up here and I'm going to select one point down here. Hit the little green check mark. 
and here is my spline. Now what a spline has, you see the line right there, it has these handles and then you can adjust uh, the spline on these kind of handles here. So you see it has one on each end. Um, a couple of tips, if you hold down control, I can't select the spline point. If you hold down control while you're dragging a spline point, it will not snap into place. So you will, I would actually do that here. Every time I move the spline points, I would hold control down so it doesn't snap to things. Um, but another thing you need to know about spline points is, uh, or these handles here, is we can actually also use constraints and that can make it a lot easier for us. Uh, to control this. So I'm actually going to give this spline handle here a vertical and this one here a horizontal relationship. Just like that. That means that these spline handles can only now moving either down here horizontal or vertical. That makes it a little bit easier to control this line that I'm now trying to align with this edge. You know, So I'm going to hold down control and grab this point and you can see that that when I drag it See how I can kind of like move that down? I want to let go. When I go down and grab the other handle down here and I can move that. And this way I can kind of like go back and forth and get it just about as close as I want to get. So you can adjust these. And if you want it finer, you might have to add another spline point in here, whatever. But I'm going to stop here and say this is pretty good. Stop the sketch. So now what we actually have is we have this profile over here, we have this profile, and then we have this spline point that is now sitting down here. So when I go back into the loft command, and I select this face, and I select this face, see that's what we happened before, right? Go the, long, the, the, the shortest route. If you go down here to rails, we can now pull the shape with that spline, just like that. Um, and we could actually go in and create another spline on the other side. We can have multiple rails and we could pull it over here too because you can actually see there's a little bit of space uh, in there. But that's prob this is probably the best parametric solution, I think, would be to uh, actually um, create loves and, and kind of like, you know, fix this bad you because, you know, kind of like working, like I said before, with garbage in, garbage out kind of thing, right? Um, the last thing I want to show you, though, is um, is actually doing this sculpting because that was kind of like my, my thing. So right now, I'll say this is the best parametric solution there is, is actually the loft. So I would create another spline over here um, and drag it out. And I might even cut this thing in half and mirror it over. Um, or I would create another law from here. I actually found that breaking the laws down to each segment seemed to, uh, to work better. But I want to show you sculpting because this is something that is also fairly new to me. Um, and I think could be kind of interesting just at least to open up your eyes about that. Let me just delete back to the U here. But I'm actually going to cheat with this. I'm only going to do half of it because I think that just in the matter of time. So I'm just going to... This is 30. <laughs> I'm just cutting half of it away here. Uh, I just wanted to do is if you have never seen the sculpting environment, um, there's a neat thing you maybe can do in here that you might find uh, kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is I actually think I'm going to create a plane that is offset up a little bit. So it's a little bit higher to show a little bit better. So I'm going to go into the sculpting environment up here. And now, again, I just wanted to show you this. It's not really like maybe the best solution, but I just, you know, just so you see it. In here, there's something called face, and I'm going to do a face up on that plane I created up there. And what I'm really just going to do here is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than our half of our U here. 
I'm pretty much just creating like a flat tile uh, like this. And then actually what you can do inside of sculpting, so this is T-splines, and I should probably create some videos on this. Um, if I go in and I edit form, if I hold down Alt, I can actually add multiple segments. So I'm actually creating like new tiles just by dragging. This is pretty cool, I think. Okay. So we kind of like created some new segments here. And I'm just going to create half of the U here. And then I can actually, I can actually grab points and I can actually just kind of like start moving things. This is sculpting, right? This is not, I wouldn't consider this very pair. This is not the workspace that I normally work in, like the parametric workspace, but it's kind of cool. Move that over there. I want to select that edge. I'm going to rotate. Oh, maybe I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a sculpting expert. Um, but what I'm doing is kind of like creating a flat piece here. And I'm trying to get it. I should probably look in from beneath. I'm trying to make it kind of somewhat like our U shape. All right, this is good enough. Um, I just wanted to show you this. So I kind of like have a flat carpet sitting above our, our half of our U here. Um, then I can go in here and I can say insert an edge and I can actually create a center edge like that. And uh, now if I go back into the edit form, I can kind of like create a, if I select the right arrow, and kind of like create, see how I can pull it, right? So I'm kind of like creating a surface that has a round. That should probably be broken one more time up. And now it's almost like, it's not more round, it's more like a weird shape. But hit OK with that. So I kind of like have this surface here, finish that, hit finish form. And now I kind of like have this round surface sitting up here. Here's a command that I have used a ton, not necessarily with with sculpting, but we're back in the parametric workspace in here. And that's a one called replace face. So if you have never seen this one, this is definitely one of those you should write down. See what I can do is I can say, replace this face on top of our U or half of U, whatever hockey stick, replace this face with this face. Huh, that's kind of neat. So let's go ahead and show you that. So Replace face is on the modify tab. And that's the face here I want to replace. And then my target face is this one. And just like that, it took that face and moved it all the way up. Hit OK. And now the sculpting one we got from here is sitting right here. If I hide that, look at that. We just got a curved face on on half of our half of our uh, you here. So that was kind of like what I wanted to show you today. I hope this was kind of interesting, helpful. We went through a couple of neat uh, commands. So the revolve, the sweep, uh, the loft, maybe you had never ever seen uh, being in the sculpting area. Um, and then this replace face is an interesting one where you can take really any face and replace it with another uh, surface face here. So I hope this was kind of helpful. I guess it goes back to what we brought in. The U uh, was kind of crummy in the way that that was, was created. And that's really just because we're taking the Windows font and we're extruding it out. And the Windows font was never really considered to be very accurate, right? I mean, that's like in your Word document versus Fusion that is, you know, a high-end um, mechanical software where it needs to solve everything. So it kind of like gave us a little bit of a, a interesting headache, I think. Um, and then hopefully you saw a couple of tools that maybe whenever you're working on something that has nothing to do with letters, but something that could make it, it uh, helpful for you. Just gonna look down in the comments area here, making sure that people, I can see that a lot of people have posted things. Really appreciate that. I can see that there's a ton of comments. I hope you guys have um, maybe chat a little bit between yourself. We got Florida, I love it. Um, Brazil, you guys are the best. Um, so 
you know, a lot of things coming in here. Now, one question I'm just going to answer quick here is, um, is how do you import a file if you're brand new? Um, yeah, let's jump into Fusion. Uh, you do, so up here you have the data panel. And in here you can create kind of like different projects uh, within here. But if I go into one of these projects, the way you import new files is by clicking on the upload file like this. And then you can select uh, whatever files it is that you want. And you can see all the different ones you're having here. So that's how you, you bring those in. Um, cool, cool, cool. There's a lot of great questions here. Um, appreciate it, Mick. Southern UK, love it. Um, thank you so much, Thomas, for the compliments. Yeah, I hope that these, uh, I really hope that that these things here are pretty cool, these live streams. I love them uh, because I feel like, you know, it's like a um, go-to meeting on steroids, I feel like, because you guys are right there. And then it's still being recorded. So if you miss it, watch the, watch the recording. I think I am going to uh, jump off here and then I'm just going to stick around and answer uh, some of the comments in here instead of trying to look at the screen and read them out and all that stuff. So thank you so much for joining. Um, even that it was unannounced, I really appreciate it. If you see the recording, thank you for watching that. And uh, I'll definitely make a point to uh, do one of these live streams soon too. I have actually have another project, more like my regular videos that I am working on too. So you will get that soon. Always, I... Really appreciate you guys joining in. I appreciate, uh, you know, you guys subscribing, your comments, and, and all that stuff. So until the next time, have an awesome day.